making sure it's started cool okay dokie so yeah welcome to my first fringe um if you haven't been to a fringe academy before uh they're all pretty much run on zoom we have sometimes during the fringe we have some in person um but they're all over zoom typically just so that everyone can make it no matter if you're local or not um Tonight, we are joined by a lovely panel of um, performers, uh, venue managers and press uh, to give you a sort of well-rounded view of what taking part in Brighton Fringe involves. Um, so I'm just, if it's okay, going to go across the screen in the order I see you. Um, so Selena Mersey, if you'd like to introduce yourself, say a little bit about yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Selena Mersey and my pronouns are she, her. I'm a performer in the genres of musical comedy and burlesque, kind of a hybrid interdisciplinary performer. I do uh, solo work. And my first Brighton Fringe was actually last year as a performer. Is that what you wanted? Do you want anything else? Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, just to add also that you did win an award. You left an important bit out. I did, sorry, I should brag more. <laughs> I won an award this year, that was very exciting. <laughs> Um, two actually <laughs> good yes and performed at actors which is our award-winning venue so very very good first fringe yeah. um second second fringe oh sorry i thought you said first year never mind um no, no. next up i've got um the brighton seagull if that's okay no you go you go <laughs> hello we're the brighton seagull uh, we're Brighton's newest and best uh, news source. Are we still the newest one? Uh, probably. probably. Um, <laughs> and we do reviews of things. So we will go to your shows and... Uh, if you want us to. If you want us to. Crucially. And be, be, be nice. Well, no, we, 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 yeah, we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll book shows. We'll just go. You know, we, we, you, if you're selling tickets, we'll show, we'll show up. Um, and yeah, we, we, we've been, I don't know. I think our we obviously not performing, but our first fringe was probably quite a while ago. Our first uh, fringe was our soft launch in twenty twenty one, where we yeah. reviewed, oh as as a as a business as yeah. where we reviewed yeah. some shows, and then uh, we officially started twenty twenty two twenty twenty three. We've done two years of the Siegel Awards, of which I believe Selena, Selena Mersey was a recipient. I'm, I'm pretty sure we gave Selena an award for best show. Um, I like that. Um, it was best concept. Thank you very much. Best concept. That was it. Thank you for remembering. Um, yeah, that's us. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, and then I've got Ben Carter, who is our current um, venues observer to the board for Brighton Fringe Board. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm Ben Carter. Yeah. So I, I run like seven, um, seven venues. Uh, I, I, I've also been performing like 15 years. That sounds like a lot, doesn't it? But it is a lot um uh yes everything's everything um i uh i was i should have got more notes um yeah uh hello you right um i've got a few actually um yeah so i've got uh so, yes yeah, so seven oh sorry so uh, i'm like venue observer which means i'm the go-to between um like the events and um the uh at the events and the venues uh like yeah you speak to me and like if i have any problems with my, my venues i just speak to myself um and yeah uh I've, I've 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 been doing it eight years so i've yeah i've finally worked out what i'm doing um and yeah uh it, will that do yeah it's perfect thank you i thought that was yeah cheers yeah. i'll put a couple <laughs> of mood now Spot on, brilliant. Uh, and we've also got Paul, who um, yeah, is still here. Brilliant. Uh, if you didn't hear, Paul can't use camera just because of laptop issues, but um, is still here. Yeah, I'm here. Um, I'm Paul. I am um a performer. I've been performing in Fringe um since 2010. Um, and I am also a venue manager. I run Ironwork Studios, um, which I've been doing since we opened in 2021 so yeah I kind of know about fringe from both sides of the coin and uh love both sides equally <laughs> that's me brilliant thank you um so yeah that's a brief overview of everyone to give you an idea of what questions you might want to ask um as I said I've got a few to get us started my first was 
when did you first get involved? But all of our panel kindly answered that already. Um, so I will kick us off with if we go in the in the same order or if anyone has a, a really uh, sort of important point they'd like to get across, go for it. Um, but my first question to the panel is uh, what piece of advice would you give someone taking part in Brighton Fringe for the first time or sort of something you wish you knew um, before taking part? Hello. So uh, I've written down three pieces of advice that I think are valuable. And these are kind of things that I've learned along the way that have been really helpful. So the first is to invest your time into building a network of other creative people. Um, this is for performers, but it can also apply for people doing all sorts of different things within the fringe. So um, for performers, it would be going to other artists shows, talking to them afterwards, just trying to make connections, uh, be really nosy, basically. Um, use the, the Facebook group. Brighton Fringe has a networking group for participants. Definitely use that. And uh, the kind of meetups that they do regularly throughout the Fringe. Um, I say this because when you make these connections, you can kind of pool your knowledge together, uh, do little favours for each other. And I know that personally, the work that I've made is uh, what it is, <laughs> award winning, <laughs> because um, I've been able to get help from some very kind collaborators, um, be they, you know, a performer friend of mine who offered to direct me when I very, very first started, um, to uh, another friend who I've met through like the kind of Brighton Fringe scene who uh, we're going to be collaborating on some costume bits soon, all sorts of stuff. So just talk to people, build a network. It's really, really useful. And you can do things for other people as well. It's just all about yeah, the community. Um, the second thing I wrote down was to get really organized about your goals and objectives. If you don't do this, you can kind of lose track of why you're doing everything. So uh, because I'm very neurotic and organized, I love this stuff. <laughs> it comes naturally to me, but if it doesn't come naturally to you, just take a moment to write down why you want to do Brighton Fringe, um, what you want to get out of it. And then you can keep coming back to that whenever you feel like you're going a little bit off track. Um, and it will kind of force you to, yeah, think about why you're doing all of this. Um, so it might be that you want to gain experience. It might be that you want to build up some reviews. Um, it might be that you want to get some awards or um, do like a bucket list thing, just do the Brighton Fringe. But as long as you know why you're doing it, um, that will kind of more you. Um, and I'd say both in terms of creativity of like, why are you making this show? And then why are you doing this festival? That's really useful to think about both of those things in that regard. And then the third and final thing is to watch all of the Fringe Academy uh, recordings. They have been so useful to me. Um, yeah, I, I ended up just making like tons and tons of notes and applying them to everything that I was doing. And I think they've just been so incredibly helpful. So go on the YouTube and watch the backlog of Fringe Academies. That's my input. Brilliant. That's very good. Thank you. I will send a link into the chat as well for our YouTube. It is just Brighton Fringe if you lose it, um, but I'll send a link so it's easy to find. Um, yeah, so the Seagull team, if you if you wanted to add to that. Yeah, I think I was just looking back at like the shows that we gave awards to and the shows that we went to see. Um, and every year, <laughs> Adam makes a big, big spreadsheet. We go through every single listing in the Fringe the, the, there are hundreds there are so many and we look at every single one and we think you know does the title sound interesting and does the poster look well made and does the description sound good um and that is our like <laughs> they're probably the first three things we look at is there you know a tight concept does it is it is it just um comedian is going to do funny jokes or is it like there is an interesting angle to this yeah bear in mind how many people you're sort of competing mm. against for attention I guess because there's loads <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's if you you know you do something to stand out then if if you're doing what we do which is looking through stuff then we you'll you'll get picked up also if you want to reach out to a mm. publication I would you know strongly encourage that I would 
say if, if you know if, if if possible don't do a sort of like you know generic press release try and like work out what the the landscape is you know who's covering stuff for the fringe you know there's not that you know there are, there are some places there's like us and there's broadway baby and there's you know like some of the other local papers mm. will do stuff as well but if you have a look at what their previous coverage is and try and work out what sort of thing you reckon they might be interested in um i remember last year we got someone who i think they did a play or something like that but they did a little it was like the seagull it, yeah, there, there yeah. Was something, there was something about a seagull in the title or whatever and obviously you know not everyone can manufacture yeah. that kind of like association but if you can do something where you're just like i think you'd be particularly interested in x because of y yeah that and like, sort of personal touch goes a long way i think any like i read i i am the one who reads all of the seagull emails generally and like any time like you know i read every single one and any time someone would say this is the show that I have and this is why I think you'd like it, I would either try and go, send a writer there, or if I couldn't make it, thank them for letting me know and try and, you know, and make sure to share it with our readers. Um, and I think as well, it's just basic things like having your social media links and having, um, even if just a very basic press kit with a portrait and a landscape picture um, and, just just that just having those basics makes it so much easier for us to tell our readers about shows that we think they would like um yeah yeah the boring logistics stuff basically <laughs> oh that's really helpful and really really important points um as you say we have we had 880 events last year so um it is really important especially for sort of press and stuff like that to have a poster that stands out and put that effort into your listing and stuff like that um the more admin time you spend on the boring stuff it's more likely to get you a bigger audience than that um ben as a sort of venue manager a uh, different perspective here what what would your piece of advice be for people coming for the first time i, I, I like the name brighton see like i'm a uh, brighton fan so yeah seagulls um uh uh, yeah, uh, I've I've got a little bit written down for this bit, but um, something that came off the top of my head was like, like I won't name the act or whatever, um, or the gender because then it narrowed it down like to half. Um, that's a sharp then. Okay, so um, so uh, like an amazing show, but the post look like rubbish. But like really bad. But I swear, like you, you know, when some people put that purple bit at the bottom, and then have make it, it just makes it look professional. However shit the rest, so um, however bad the rest of it looks, like it, it just makes it. I, I swear, we got more people coming to the ones that had that purple bit at the bottom, bright and fringe. The dates all nice. It it just makes it look like an official fringe thing rather than someone's just taken a selfie and put their name on it and it's sorry run over now, now uh, that's right. i was just gonna add um what ben means by the purple bit um we've got on our website which i'll send a link to is we've got um you can add to your or uh, poster a footer which is like bright and fringe and it it as ben says it makes it look a bit more uniform people can yeah. instantly tell it's a bright and fringe event and stuff like that it, honestly, it was like a great show, but um, they they just didn't get a lot of people coming because because the the flyer just people like uh, yeah I, I'm not mentioning them so I can say what I like really, but people were literally laughing at the flyers whilst going to see worse shows that had the purple like I, I think that it, yeah that, that's my advice though and it's really good advice and um, anyway um, yeah so I can only really talk from like the way like I. I book. Um, I mean, I, I've done done shows before, but I can't be really asked to talk about them. Um, uh, but uh, they're really good, though. Um, if anyone was wondering, um, you can't review them now as they're done. Um, yeah, you could do it if you like. Um, cheer me up a bit. But um, but uh, I, anyway, get on with it, mate. That, that was for me. Um, uh, yeah. So um, yeah. So it, uh, if if you're booking one of my shows, for example. You'd, um, the first thing you need to do is book the venue because um, I do, I, I, for me, I've got ADHD and it's just like first come, first serve, easier. Like I, I just, I, I really don't, yeah. Like, so, so the first thing is um, if, you, if, if you want to book any of mine, um, send me an email. It's benrobcarter at gmail.com. And then I'll just send you a list of all, all the venues 
spreadsheets and stuff and then we agree on that then you get on a vintage run um and then you f- fill all that out i get an email um saying that you've applied to my venue i press a set accept and then the uh event and the venue are both linked um yeah uh i, I don't know. i didn't even read any of my notes but that was what i was going to say so say yeah. again. <laughs> yes, thank you. Did you want to quickly say which venues you do manage in case people are interested? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I've got um, I don't. I've got the Caxton Arms. That's a sixty seater. That that's um that's like our long, longest running one. It's like two minutes from um Brighton Brighton Station. Um. Uh. I've got. Uh, the snug, which is literally just down the road, is p- part of um, uh, the free jolly butchers. It's like a little f- thirty seater sort of intimate one. Um, oh, also with the Caxton, we've got halfway down. We've got a curtain that hides the other thirty seats behind. So it means if you are a bit anxious about people not turning up, like um, you can draw that curtain and it looks like a, a a full room and also what what i suggest to ax is they uh you keep that curtain closed wait till it all full, fills up at the front and then open the curtain so you haven't got like just two people sat at the back because it's just weird it's a long room and yeah it's just yeah um anyway uh you said a list of venues like this could take forever um Okay, so that's two of them done. Well, well done, Ben. Uh, that was for me. Um, I've yeah, I've got the Earth and Stars. That's a hundred seater. No, uh, sorry, uh, that's a thirty seater. Yeah, I always get them two mixed up. Thirty and a hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've been waiting on my left from the Queen for ages. Anyway, Earth and Stars. Um, that uh, yeah, that's a thirty seater, which is um upstairs so it means like no but well, well, there's no noise bleed in any of them um uh they're a little bit in the snug um but we're working on that with like soundproof curtains and thing like it, it was off our first year doing it last year so we're working on that this year um i've got uh the joker um which is an outside um uh like roof terrace but like it's all covered, like so come rain, come shine, like happy, happy. Um, happy when it's sunny. I, I don't know, you, you do you. Um, I've got bleach, which is upstairs at the Heron Hounds. That's a hundred seater. Um, so that's for like uh people that want hundred seaters. Um, I've got off Broadway, which is upstairs at Bar Broadway, um, which is like literally a one minute walk from the Spiegel tent. Which brings in like thirty five thousand people a year, like I, I, I think that's right. Like I'm not very good with numbers. I thought thirty. I, was, I don't know. I'm uh, to say no, yeah. We're not good with numbers either. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thirty, 30 is and a hundred every day. <laughs> um, I've got presuming Ed. That, that was our first year last year. That went amazing. Like yeah. Um, I mean they all went amazing. It's all just happy, happy, happy. Like you, you know what I mean. Brilliant. Uh, Do you have any other bits to add? <laughs> oh, uh, um, oh, sorry. Did you have another venue? No, no, no. So, so oh. I, I just thought, like, oh, just shut up, Ben. Um, uh, I, I, I was flattered. <laughs> you, you asked me to, to not talk anymore, to be honest. Um, uh, I think I forgot one, uh, if that helps. But I'll, yeah. I'll uh, uh, send me an email, benrobcarter at gmail.com, and I'll remember to I'll remember it. Yeah, we've got all of these in Eventatron as well. So if anyone has started looking at listening to an event, um you can scroll the venue browser and I'm pretty sure all of Ben's are already in there, so you should be able to see those. They went um, up today. Yeah. Brilliant. Um and Paul, um, so just sort of any advice you'd give for someone coming to Brighton Fringe for the first time, both as obviously you're you're a performer and a venue. Um, so any any notes on that? Well, the notes that I'd written pretty much were verbatim what Selena had to say. So <laughs> great minds think alike there, Selena. Um, but uh so I was thinking the other things that I don't think has been mentioned much is um budgeting 
and advertising i think it's it's really really important to um do spreadsheets and um sort of work out what what the costs are going to be and and to really um really put as much as you can into advertising i find as a performer that's um been really really beneficial the first couple of years that i did fringe i just sort of signed up and did the show and just expected people to come along and and was confused as to why no one did <laughs> and um you know, I've learned over the years that the more that you can put into advertising and there's a lot of options available. There's some more affordable options and some that have slightly bigger budget. But there's there's a lot going on at Fringe. There's a lot of choices for people to see. Um, So it's really worth like, like um, as uh, I think everyone's saying it's really important to have to good um, posters and things made. But then once you've had that lovely post made, you want people to see it. So. There's options to have lamppost banners that can go all around the town, um, the posters in sort of official fringe spots. Make sure that your venue puts up your poster and puts flyers um, up for you. Um, this sort of thing is really important. But then, yeah, looking at look at the cost of it all and put it in your spreadsheet and just sort of get an idea of what it is you're going to be spending. And it can it can be quite expensive, but it's definitely worth it to to get the to get the footfall is um probably my advice amazing i could just add something yeah go um, for it. i'd say if you're concerned about getting an audience in then um everything that paul's just said yes marketing is super important advertisement um and <laughs> i got this from the marketing fringe academy how to market your show but um <laughs> I feel like a teacher's pet um Rhiannon was talking about finding your target audience and that's been immensely helpful for me um, and I think it ties into what I was saying earlier a little bit about figuring out why you're doing your show what do you want the message to be what do you want it to say about you that's also going to help you figure out who should come to your show because if you have broad advertising people aren't going to look at it and go this is a show that really speaks to me and I want to go to it but if you really hammer down into your niche and who is going to want to come to see your show, then you can get specific about where you're advertising, you know, um, like maybe specific communities, specific shops or uh, places um, where you can actually physically place your advertisement. But also it will shape how you construct this like image of your show, your description, your photo, the title of it. It's all down to like what is it at its core and who is it for and who are you and what, what is all of this yeah. um yeah <laughs> also with I mean as well as physical posters and that what to time of what you're saying Selena is you can you can target um social media posts so it, I think you know a lot of people just put their advertising on their own social media but that's only going to go to the, your existing friends so you can use Facebook and Insta to do targeted posts at the groups that like Selena saying you know who you think your audience will be and that can be you can do as much or as little as you want so that's something that's definitely worthwhile doing I've I've sold quite a number of tickets that way over there because you can have a direct link to the to the ticket link so yeah okay that's me over and out <laughs> brilliant thank you just to add to that obviously um assuming that most of you are, are taking part for the first time maybe haven't started a registration or anything um sort of what what Selena was saying about working out who your audience is you can even sort of tie that into choosing your venue um you know the actors where where Selena performed is a great um LGBTQ plus focus venue so their programming mainly centered around that so if if that's a big theme in your show it's good to be in a space like that where obviously they already have that audience um similarly Ben runs a lot of comedy venues um and sort of we have sort of cabaret venues so it's it's looking at sort of who that place already attracts and how that could help you can yeah I just, can I just say like um yeah I've, I've been like rushing around like like mad like it's um it's it's not just going to be comedy like like uh, especially like um bleach hundred seater like it's don't swear it's well huge um, and you could do whatever you like in there. Anyway, yeah. No, that's good to know. Yeah, um, 
I've got a similar sort of thing here. Obviously, most of most of well, everyone here is local. Um, but we've got a question from Tim just asking about advertising if you're further afield. Um, so just sort of asking how people who aren't from Brighton can maybe get some advertising done before they arrive. Um, I can sort of answer mm -hmm. this and then I'll see if anyone else has any other bits to add from sort of other performers they've spoken to or people they've had at the venues. Um, but all of the advertising that um, Selena and Paul mentioned, that's all bought through Eventstron. So Eventstron, where you list your event, I did send the link a little bit up. Um, that's a one one stop shop really for Brighton Fringe. So you you register your event, you can contact the venues in there, um, you can pay for advertising in there, uh, you can check box office sales. Um, so in that you can you can get marketing through Brighton Fringe. Um, it does come at an extra cost just to cover sort of printing and stuff like that. Um, but that is all managed by the Brighton Fringe team. So myself um, and the other artist services team, Rhiannon and Sarah. Um, what you would do is you would just sort of purchase the advertising you want, upload your flyer, and then we deal with the distribution and everything like that. So that's the most sort of direct way of doing it. Um, other than that, the networking group that I, I sent in the group chat a bit further up, um, we do get various people offering to flyer in there and stuff like that. So people will often post about saying, you know, they've done flyer in at Fringe before or at Edinburgh and stuff. Does anyone need a flyer if they're out of town? Um, also, it's really worth talking to your venue um, as they might be able to help too. Ben? James Onion seems to just fly for whoever. Like, yeah, send him a message. He'll, he'll do whatever you want. Who is that? Dave Onion? James Onions with a Z. Dave. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it's like obviously, I, like um, I, I believe in consent. I, I, I can't um, like say for him, but like do like um, yeah. So it's worth sending him a message. He'll probably just fly for you. Just have oh, fun. Amazing. If you wouldn't mind putting contact details in the in the chat, or if you say them, I can type them down. If you if you've got them, that would be really handy. I, I um yeah. Oh, I, I, not, I, I we can try and circulate. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I don't mind. Check it, uh, James. Onions, uh, but, but, um, oh, he, 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 he also sorry, um, he he also puts on um for like new comedians and stuff. Uh, he puts on so many shows. He's so supportive of the scene, and like yeah, it's just uh, I'm, I just typed his name. Hey, what well, boy? Yeah, yeah, good. It's been a good day today. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, just uh, yeah, he he's worth giving a shout. I, I might even ask him if he can like tech some of mine and things like that. Like, um, cause I've got seven, like, I can't, I can't be at every venue at once. I don't know. It looks like a go, but, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. No, it's really helpful. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I will get, get details across contact details. Um, but yeah, as I say, post in the networking group, uh, and message us as well. Um, we're working on putting together like a contact list for th things like this. So we should be able to send you some some people. Um, yes, Selena. Um, I just wanted to add in response to that question about not being local. And I will preface this by saying I am local. So I'm sorry that I don't have direct experience of this, but I'm just thinking about what I would do if I were performing in a different city that I've never been to. And I have spoken to people about this before. Um, I think this ties in with identifying your niche and your target audience because you want to conserve your time and energy, basically. Um, there's not much point in advertising to everywhere and everyone because it just won't work. It'll be too broad. People won't come um, and you're going to waste your own time and energy and money, probably. So um, identify your target audience, then think about where they're going to be. So, for example, my show and me as a performer will appeal most to women, to queer women, um, queer women who like cabaret. <laughs> um, so when I'm thinking about advertising, I am thinking about like, let's say like Manchester, for example. I would research like um, queer bars in Manchester or feminist spaces, um, maybe reach out to the universities, feminist society, stuff like that, really specific groups and places and invite them to come. Um, if it's a physical space, you can always get flyers delivered directly there if they 
are up for that and then they can put your flyers up so there's there's some ways that you can kind of be there without being there and I would also say um, when you're speaking to people who inhabit these spaces where your audiences are also going to inhabit you always want to ask um is there anyone else in your network who you think it's worth me speaking to? And that's how you get that chain of connections and you start to build up a community, even if you're not physically there. Just lots of messaging and asking people, push it a little bit and say like, hey, is it okay if I, you know, got flyers delivered to your pub? Would you put them up for me? And always, you know, if it's possible for you to visit, then that's useful. Put a name, put a face to the name. Um, yeah, I hope that made sense. Thank you. Yeah, just to add, um, it was obviously mentioned earlier that we do a Fringe Academy on marketing, um, but that will be coming up later in the year or early next year, maybe. So keep an eye out for that or you can go back and watch the one we did last year um, and that will have a lot more sort of specific advice on on tips and tricks. Um, but hopefully that has helped for now. Um, we're getting quite a few questions in the chat. So what I'll do is I'll just keep monitoring them um, and we'll we'll answer them as many as we can until time runs out. Um, but the first one that came in um, was from Gemma, just asking, how do you overcome the fear of doing this for the first time? I have felt a bit of a fraud even just starting the process. Um, so yeah, whoever would like to answer that, I'll just quickly say, um, everyone on this Zoom is presumably doing it for the first time, so you're not alone. Um, and the whole point of Brighton Fringe is to test new work and try something out. So um, you don't need to be a professional. That's the whole point. There's a lot of work in progress that we get. Um, there's a lot of shows that will do it for a year and then come back the next year more polished. Um, and it really is just that space to test out work. Um, we're not expecting you to be a professional Broadway star or whatever. <laughs> um, but Ben, yes, you look keen to ask. It, it does look like I've got a yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't just winding up. Yeah. Uh yeah. Um, so when I <laughs> it was funny, when I first started comedy, um, like my mate wanted to do like a a, a split show with me. And uh I was like, Oh, I don't think I'm ready. It was like Oh, it doesn't matter. There's loads of shit shows at the fringe. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna wait a little bit. So I, I wait. I waited until I was ready to do like an actual split show, and then the comedian dropped out. And so I did a. So I was like, Nah, actually, I'm gonna do a full show. I did four, 45 minutes, like just. Yeah, like I, I also got um. If you remember James McDonald, uh, like he did ten minutes at the start, like you know to sort of get everyone going. Like he, he, yeah, you you can call it your show with add. It, it can still be like your your show with an added, and and you could get a guest per like because other acts are desperate to pro promote their shows as well. So they'd love to like anyone would love to start. So if you don't have a full hour, like I, I, I've never been to a fringe show where I haven't had needed a wee at like forty five minutes. Like, like I, I swear they should be forty five minutes, and then they just run like clockwork. But um, uh, yeah, enough about wee. I, I'll uh, I'll let you guys carry on. I I would say that um, if, if it's okay to, to jump in, that some of the best shows that I think I speak for Adam as well that we have ever seen have been works in progress. James Danielewski did a show last year, Rainbow Trout Work in Progress. I nearly went myself. It was the funniest thing. Sorry to keep talking about we. I what's happening? But it was- uh, It was at my venue, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so, so good. And actually some, I would so much rather see um, like a really tightly constructed 30 minute show than a show that's an hour long, but it's, it's kind of fine. and. Uh, Speaking of someone who did their first their, their, their first little comedy show a couple of months ago, um, I, I I am mainly pressed, but I I I dip my toes in a little comedy course. Um, just just like bring your friends if if you can try and bring your friends or bring other performers and try and get them to like you know sit at the front and cheer you on because if nothing else you know I think a small but highly engaged audience is always going to be better than like a, a big room of people who are like. Uh, neutral about what they're seeing. Not that I think anyone here is going to do a show that people feel neutral about. But no, that's really helpful. Um, did 
did Paul or Selena either of you have anything to add sort of imposter syndrome and doing it for the first time um any advice absolutely um so I actually put off doing my first Brighton Fringe for ages because I was nervous about like oh I don't think I'm good enough I don't think I'm ready yet um and then I spoke to a performer friend of mine who I said to him how do you know when you're ready like I, I just I don't think I can get the show and me like good enough in time for the deadline and he was like oh no one's got their show ready by the deadline you just you just register and then the months tick by and you have pressure on you to make something so this kind of applies more to people who are devising new shows um but I would say <laughs> deadlines are your friend pressure yourself into just doing it but also the amount of performers I've spoken to who you, you have no idea what they feel like in that process um how nervous people are and then you see their show and they're incredible you're not the only one who's feeling like that. Um, also try and get as much practice and experience as you can, um, depending on what genre you're doing. I know, for example, in comedy and cabaret, it's easy to get, you know, little slots at variety nights. Um, but if you are making like straight theater, then you could do a scratch night, get 20 minutes of material on stage, do a, a staged reading. Um, there's a bunch of ways that you can kind of trial it a few times before you actually do the festival if you would like to have a little run up to it. And yeah, don't be afraid of slapping a work in progress on there because kind of like Carly Mae said, the best case scenario is, you know, it's just a really, really, really good work in progress. And then the next time you do it, you can remove that label. Just go for it. Also, um, sorry, had you stopped talking? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I, I just, yeah, sorry. I just got a bit excited. Um, I don't know why. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, I I also, one, so you'll see, see like a spreadsheet of all the shows and anyone's welcome to any free spots that aren't taken just to do like a run through of their show, get used to the room and things like that. Like, so, so it's not like the, the first show, it's like, wow, how do I work out the tech? Like the, the tech symbol is just, it's all set up, ready to go. But it's nice if, if you've got like a projector and things just to sort of have a little run through. Like, and and that, that um, I mean, the cats are, uh, yeah, I, I normally say I, I can like completely confirm that at the Caxon if you wanted to run through. I'm sure the presuming Ed's, I said, they'd all do it. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I'm glad I interrupted. Uh, sorry. Bye. No, that was good. Thank you. Yeah, we do. We do also have um, some places that offer up rehearsal space, either a low fee um, or stuff like that, sort of in the build up to Fringe. So if you are either local or are able to get down a bit before, but your venue can't offer that to you, um, we have some sort of spaces around around the city that would give you um, a chance to just have that space where you can run through the show with like full cast or just sort of in a room that's not your bedroom or something like that. Um, I, just to quickly say, Sadie, I did answer your question in the chat. Hopefully you saw it. Um, it was just asking about sort of what's expected in terms of runs at Brighton Fringe. Um, and a lot of people do sort of wonder if you're expected to do the full month because that's how it's generally operated in Edinburgh. But um, we don't operate on that model at all. Um, we we would actually advise that you don't do a full run. I think we had one person do it in 2023, um, but it's not the same as Edinburgh at all. Um, it's still a very large fringe, um, but it's not that same intensity or pressure of expecting you to sort of go and go and go for 20 30 days um our standard is more more sort of like three to five days if you're from London we get a lot of people come down they might do a weekend at the start and a weekend at the end um we're very flexible in terms of uh, sort of when when you take part and in what capacity um but moving on from that I think the next one um Rob asked um so I might go to Paul since we haven't heard for you in a, from you in a while um and you've been a venue manager for a bit as well now uh how do venues usually prefer to be contacted um through Eventron or emails more preferred um and also on top of that um what is best to put in an initial message to a venue 
Um, I personally prefer messages via Eventatron just because it's all very neatly packed in a in a nice, easy to find the messages thing rather than just getting lost in all the other messages that come through for the venue. Um, and what um what I mean the perfect message I guess would be introducing yourself, telling a bit about what the show is. Um, some links is always really good. It's if you've done the show before. Um, but if obviously if you haven't, that's fine. Um. But I, I, as much info as possible is really good, such as um, uh, I'm from such such company. We want to do a show on these sorts of dates. The show, there's eight of us in the show and our tech is basic lighting and we need four microphones or something like that. That kind of info is really, really helpful um, because, you know, if you're a 20 piece act and you've got loads of tech requirements or whatever that we don't have, then... And it's just sort of saving time. Uh, it's also really good to, to, I think it was touched upon a bit earlier, but to sort of say why you want to do it at our venue. You know, we're, we're um, an LGBTQ plus venue. So you, you might want to say something about that just to show that you've actually like read up because I know that obviously a lot of people just will blanket email all, all venues that, that they think might be right and they're not always right. So just a little bit of research into the venue that you're approaching. Um, I sometimes get people say looking for like maximum capacity of 50, but we're a 220 capacity venue and our um, higher fee reflects that. So that if people who are looking for a maximum of 50, that's not really going to be probably in their budget. Um, so yeah, much info as possible and a bit of research on the venue um, and through Eventatron, I would say, is my advice on that. Amazing. Ben, did you have anything to add about sort of how you prefer to be messaged or um what you'd look for in like an initial message from a show? Oh, you've just sent it in the chat. Uh, I'll, I'll just read it out then. I personally prefer an email initially. Sorry, I can't read my own typing. <laughs> it's normally right and I can't read. Uh, yeah, I prefer like I, I prefer an email just to keep it all, all in one place. Um, it, It's just I have folders for each venue and if it, it's just the way I work when I've got a venture on and if yeah it's so, but you you are welcome to message me on the venture on and I'll I'll probably just say look here's my email can we chat via there like do what you like basically but yeah uh as long as it's email yeah just just from a press point of view quickly this might be controversial um I, I don't know how many journalists would appreciate me saying this but if you send an email to a publication and it's kind of it's been maybe you know four or five days it's coming up to your show you haven't heard back and you haven't seen that they've shared anything don't be afraid to just send a little like a polite little just wanted to check if you've seen this and maybe kind of try and reword your email a little bit i i try so hard to reply to every email we got so many emails like don't send an email at 4 p.m on a tuesday and then at 9 a.m on a wednesday be like ah why would you reply but i don't think anyone here would do that just um yeah don't be afraid to send a little push and i think just to echo what everyone else has said please try and keep it to emails because if people start emailing if people start sending instagram dms and uh, tweets and facebook messages it all gets a bit lost so keeping it to email is always much preferred for me yeah least. can i sort, sort of like yeah basically say that again um that's very true uh like like um if i've if i sometimes i might email you twice like the same message like also um if 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 anyone notices um like any mistakes in my emails like it, you're not being like like a meanie that's bad and you're not being a meanie by um like just telling me like oh look like I've, I've seen this because there's so so much that uh you, you, you know that I could have put one one link in the wrong place or spelling mistakes just yeah fair like um yeah I, I, I can't speak English so you can probably work out what I'm saying but like uh, actually no spelling mistakes yeah spelling mistakes as well yeah um I, 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 I welcome all advice um I welcome everyone I'm a really yeah really yeah
um I think that's yeah sort of what was touched upon there is really important of like obviously different venue managers um might prefer something different but it's likely that if you message in a Ventatron they'll then maybe just give you their email address if that's what they prefer um and similarly like obviously if they prefer to sort of file it all in one way um you know they've everyone gets a lot going on during fringe so you might be sent something incorrect from a venue manager um from you know sort of anyone you're involved with even from us from time to time we might send you something wrong um so it's always worth if you're unsure or if, if you don't think it's right just following up because it is quite a hectic time for anyone who's been involved in a fringe um so it is likely that you might get sent something wrong occasionally um it looks like we've caught up on the questions in the chat for now um so I just thought uh, I would go back to the Brighton Seagull team, um, if that's OK. Um, just sort of you touched upon it a bit about sort of like what you look for in a show and obviously what like might attract you. And uh, I mean, I can't believe you scroll all all of the listings. We had 880 this year, so that's quite an effort. <laughs> um, Adam was just saying he does that, but we, we both do that. Thank you very much. Oh, Adam. Amazing. <laughs> um, I do it as well, but as a punter. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of sad yeah yeah <laughs> um but yeah so sort of what do you look for in a show um what might sort of pull you in and then also uh what's the best way for people to sort of get in touch with you and maybe attract you to come into their show um look fully being real the show that we were most excited to see last year based on listing alone was bold man sings rihanna uh, and the 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 the, the log the, the the title yeah. of the show was called was Bald Man Sings Rihanna, and then the, the log line the below was Ever seen a bald man sing Rihanna? And I looked at that and I was like, that is the funniest listing I've ever seen. And it was it was devastating it, because it we we it was our last show of the fringe. We made sure it was our last show, and we went and we were the only people there. And he wasn't going to do the show, and I was like, no, you yeah. don't understand. We came for that. We 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 we'd been. I think we'd been out all afternoon. We, we came back. We came back specifically for that, and he put it on. It was great. It was um, so good. So what what do we look for? Bald Some, men. No. Who say, not, no. Not specifically. <laughs> I know you want to Sorry. find your people, yeah. but what do we oh. look for? Um something that is <laughs> so like listings often yeah. take so comedy listings. Right, okay. Because I I also, Selena, used to do the reading the whole program before um I I, I started doing this it's review stuff. Um, you you quickly see that like for comedy listings, for example, take on a couple of different formats, mm. right? You've got the like you know X comedian is a funny person who will make you laugh. You've got you know which you uh, hope as yeah, a yeah. You've got like right? you know sort of comedic quote dash comedian's mum or whatever it is. You know like th there are a bunch of things that you start that, to a see formula. like a bunch of tropes. Do try and do something that isn't that right. Do be be interesting. Like tr d grab the what. <laughs> Well, <laughs> yes well no you've got to stand out standing out for like again if you're if you're trying to you know sort of sell yourself to to, to people who look, look at a lot of this stuff yeah, standing right. out is very important um you know I, I, like even if you are just doing you know like it should just be that you're able to be a funny person mm. making jokes that's what you know <laughs> that's what a lot of comedy is meant to be but you know you don't have to be doing a sort of big Stuart Lee concept show or whatever but you do have to have something that sort of makes it jump out the alternative of course, it's like, you know, reach out directly. I think the, you, Carly May said earlier, email, ideally, mm. you know, um, like we sort of transact business stuff via email. You know, we're happy to be reached out to via other means for sort of other bits and bobs. But generally speaking, if you're trying to reach publications, mm. they'll have an email somewhere on their website. There'll be a contact us page, you know, or a contact form equally. You know, that'll, that'll go to the same, yeah, same yeah, sort yeah. of place usually. Um, reach out on there. Um, you know, I think we've got, I can't remember whether we've got a specific email for like show stuff, but we'll probably set one up for the fringe this year, given the, it, to make it a bit, a bit easier to sort. Um, yeah, like, you okay. know, like we said, reach out, but make sure that it's, it's tailored. Don't just do a sort of generic thing. Make sure that it's, again, stuff we said at the beginning, targeted, specific, try and, you know, they'll, if they, unless they're sort of doing it as their first fringe coverage, there'll be stuff on the website that you can go back and have a look at to get a flavor for what they like. I mean, honestly, yeah. even if someone emailed and was like, I saw that you went to see this comedian and my style is similar to that comedian. Yeah. I would honestly wholeheartedly say it is so, so much better to email 
three publications with incredibly well tailored pitches than to email 10 publications with a generic press release because that's that's what it is essentially it's it's if we look at it from a journalistic perspective it's a pitch you're pitching yourself you're pitching your show you're trying to say to these this publication hello look at what i have to to offer please tell people about it but please also review me and i i think um yeah, uh, be, being being tailored, being yeah. as tailored as you can be. And obviously, like, it's difficult, but, but like, you know, Brighton's not a big place, right? We don't have a huge, huge number of publications and certainly not a huge number that are doing extensive coverage of it. We're stuff. the best ones. We're the best one, yeah. obviously. But like Selena said about, um, like, venue choice and, you know, marketing aims, like, look at what different publications cover. We focus quite heavily on, like, you know... Theatre, comedy. Yeah, yeah, but, we, 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 but also, like, in, our, in terms of our coverage of other stuff, like trade union issues, obviously maybe not so much comedy <laughs> choice, LGBTQ plus issues, you know, that's something that we do a lot of coverage of. Obviously, it's local, but it sort of informs the kind of stuff that we're likely to cover. So, yeah, again, just, like, have a look and see what how you can target stuff to... Um, different publications our, uh, our website is siegel.news and i am just now putting my email and the website in the chat uh so yeah please please do get in touch if you want to i'm always up for being on anyone's mailing list makes me feel very popular on a monday morning when it's got a lot of emails yeah i think just to sort of add to that that was really really helpful um to if you if sort of uh we spoke about um goals earlier selena mentioned sort of what is your goal of coming to brighton fringe and if that goal is to get a review or press coverage um it's about being realistic unfortunately the the big press sort of guardian bbc itv all of those um are very very hard to one get in touch with and two convince to come along to your show um so whilst it could be exhausting sort of trying to message all of the big ones, you're far more likely to get someone like Brighton Sea go along or Fringe Review or Fringe Biscuit. Um, British Comedy Guide were quite engaged this year. Um, we do have a list on our website. Uh, it's also an eventatron, I believe, under sort of marketing and press section. Um, but if you are looking for sort of more local contacts and stuff, who can actually get down to your show without sort of the cost of travel and accommodation and stuff like that it's it's far more likely that they will come to a show so it'll feel like a better use of your time um than sort of sending out loads and loads of emails and not hearing back from you know the the really big press who don't even always cover edinburgh sort of stuff like that you know it's even even at that scale you're it's it's hard to get reviews from the big press um but yeah i think unless there is anything else um any other final questions we will probably wrap it up there or any if if the panel had anything else to sort of add to this before we um close but i i think it looks like hopefully everyone's questions have been answered i realized i forgot to say one really important thing which is when you're registering make a timeline make a timeline from now until the date of your event and you use that time if you don't do that you'll forget to do everything and then all of a sudden the last minute oh my god you need to make a timeline and try as much as possible yeah i could talk about this so much more but i'm <laughs> so, can i make a different sort of point um that like, i kind of leave it all to the last minute <laughs> Yeah, those are the two ways of working in Fringe. We either get the people who are super organised and they've, they've registered an early bird or we get people calling us up the day before their event, uh, panicking about something. Um, and I can definitely recommend the more organised from the sort of stressed artist calls that we get and the pressure it adds to their uh, schedule of performing. Um, but we do have on our website, obviously you can make a sort of generic one with specific bits that you need to personally do. Um, but on our website... Um, on our artist page there's a an artist info guide and i think it's if you scroll down to the very last page of that once you're in the pdf there is a timeline in that um and it tells you sort of mostly when the big things are happening in terms of fringe but also tells you sort of some things that you should consider doing at that time so sort of when to get your show registered when to look at accommodation um when to maybe contact press um so that gives you a sort of very generic breakdown that you could then personalize if you wanted to add in your own bits 
Um, and it's got loads of other helpful info in that guide as well. So that's just, as I say, on our website in the artist section. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's us done. Um, thank you to everyone for coming along tonight. Hope it was useful uh, and it's made taking part in Brighton Fringe a little less scary. Um, if you do have any questions, follow-up questions, um, our email for the artist services team is takepart at brightonfringe.org. Um, so just send us a message on there. It's all on the website on the contact us section as well. Um, but drop us an email, any questions, and we'll either be able to answer them for you or or sort of direct you to the right place. Um, Sorry, I think just to say, um, I've been talking a lot with various people recently about like, uh, like I, I, I've, I've been having some calls with people about the ways that they can approach press and how to do it and how to make it seem a bit less scary. So if anyone wants to uh, book in some time, then feel free. But also you don't have to. Oh, amazing. Thank you. So there you go. You can contact the Brighton Seagull as well if you are sort of keen to get press along, but aren't quite sure how. We're not uh, scary. It's just us. <laughs> <laughs> We're very nice, I promise. So Lena can vouch. Yeah, <laughs> you have to vouch for it because you won an award. You don't have a choice. Um, but yeah, no, it's so yes, as I say, email us if you've got any questions. Um, the early bird registration period uh, is the 4th of December. So if you register before then, you get a bit of a discount. Um, but if you haven't got it all sorted before then, you can still register up until May. Um, the earlier, the better, um, so that you've got more time to prepare and everything. But yeah, I will, let's see, I will shut this recording off now. <laughs>